Hello, my name is Kyle, and today I'll be talking about active fiber reinforced elastomeric enclosures. Before we get into what active fiber reinforced elastomeric enclosures are, I will talk about our traditional fiber reinforced enclosures. These enclosures are made from soft rubber and have constraining layers that create a specific output when pressurized. These constraining layers are made from angled fibers that are patterned to produce extension, twist, expansion, or bending. Unfortunately, because the threads are permanently attached to the enclosure, they can only produce a single output. Because of this, we created an active fiber reinforced elastomeric enclosure. To make it active, we added motors to independently change fiber angles to modify the actuated output. Using two motors, we can change our fiber angle output between plus or minus 30 degrees. We also use two motors that drive a spool to remove excess fiber slack. Finally, we use one pneumatic input for actuating the enclosure. By adding the ability to change fiber angles and slack, we reinvent the traditional fiber reinforced elastomeric enclosure by having different displacement and twist outputs. In this video, we can see the performance from our actuator. Here, a spooling system can be seen modifying the fiber lengths. Fiber angles are adjusted to change the actuator output. Next are some fiber angle orientations illustrating how the device output changes. When the fibers are aligned with the actuator, we have no twist and a lot of bulging. When fibers are aligned at an angle, we observe maximum twist. Finally, when fibers are crisscrossed, we have a lot of contraction with minimal twist. We used an experimental setup to measure the output twist and displacement from the actuator. We measured the response at three different pressures and for fiber angles ranging from negative 30 to positive 30 degrees. We also tested two different methods of fiber tensioning. The first is sequential constraint activation, abbreviated as SCA, in which no spooling occurs. We tested this to see how the actuator would respond if we did not use the spooling mechanism. The second is initial constraint activation, abbreviated as ICA. This case used spooling to tension the fibers so that there was no slack before actuation. Finally, we used a magnetic tracker attached to the bottom of the actuator to measure these twist and displacement outputs. Based on our experiment, we found that the actuator achieves twist angles between positive and negative 60 degrees while being able to contract by 2 millimeters and elongate by 4 millimeters. We also found a predominantly symmetric response where flipped alpha and beta fiber angle conditions would create similar outputs. Shown here are the results from our spooling condition at the highest pressure tested. The plot to the left shows the different twist angles that we can achieve with different fiber angle combinations while the plot on the right shows the different displacements that we achieve with different fiber angle combinations. We can see that when fiber angles are opposite from one another, a crisp cross pattern on the actuator is created, thus limiting twist. Therefore, for these angles, we see minimal twist. We also see that when the fiber angles are aligned at the same angle, the actuator produces maximal twist. This occurs because with only one fiber angle present, there is no opposing twist applied by the constraints. We also see that when we have this dominant twist, we have the most displacement. 
because the actuator does not encounter a longitudinal constraint until the threads have been aligned with the longitudinal axis of the actuator. To understand the range of output our actuator can produce, we plotted the displacement and corresponding twist for our spooling and non-spooling cases. These plots show all the possible combinations of twist and displacement that can be achieved by the device. A traditional elastomeric enclosure would only have a single point for each pressure, while our actuator can actively reconfigure its fiber constraints, allowing for more twist and displacement combinations. Comparing the two cases, we found that spooling creates a more linear relationship between the twist angles and displacement that the device creates, while the absence of spooling creates more variability between twist angles and displacement. Lastly, we observed that our actuator has a dynamic response that could be leveraged to create more programmable motions. This plot shows the actuator response after pressurization at time zero for an actuator configuration where fibers are aligned with the actuator's longitudinal axis and given some slack. We can see that fibers begin to activate only after the actuator extends a certain distance due to fiber slack. Then, higher pressures can cause the actuator to bulge and shorten. If our fibers had no slack, then there would be no overshoot because fibers would activate at onset of actuation to cause the actuator to immediately shorten. If we increased our flow rate, we can also attain steady state faster. Therefore, we can set fiber lengths, fiber angles, air flow rate to change our dynamics before reaching our final state. In conclusion, we developed a soft actuator that can have multiple output configurations because of its active fiber constraints. In the future, we aim to minimize the bulkiness of the device, add an additional constraint for bending, and to measure the force output from the actuator. Thank you for listening to my presentation and I hope that you and your families are safe during this COVID-19 pandemic. I also would like to thank our Robosoft conference organizers who have adapted to the constantly changing public health crisis.